Hello, and welcome back to a very special panel. Um, so for the past few events that Game Gym has put on, we have had uh, contributions to the Nas uh, Children's National Hospital. That's why we, you know, that's our charity drive. And so our special panel today is we actually have Dr. Kevin Cleary from Children's National to talk to us about their programs, um, as well as Josh Hapkin, the CEO and founder of Game Gym. So Welcome both. Um, please introduce yourself. And uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Cleary, Kevin, I'll, I'll let you go first. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do at the hospital? Great. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for hosting this as well and giving me the chance to present today. Um, so what I'd like to do is just say very briefly, our hospital is a 300-bed hospital located in the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., and we serve the needs of children in Washington, D.C. and the suburbs. And the research group I run is physically located in the hospital. We're on the top floor of the hospital, uh, which makes for very good communication between the scientists and engineers, uh, which my team represents and our clinical partner, uh, which I really think is crucial to advance the future of medicine as, as medicine becomes more and more high tech. Um, so my background is engineering. I was trained as an engineer, a mechanical engineer all the way through, uh, mostly in uh, doing robotics. And I did my postdoc in Japan uh, way back in 1990, so I've been around for a little bit, uh, but then I was fortunate enough to get into the medical field. So I worked for um, a Department of Defense and NASA for a bit, and then I found my home in the medical field where, you know, I think uh, we feel good about trying to, uh, to now build pediatric devices to help kids. So I run a research group, um, you know, we look for funds, so I'm very grateful for events like this today, you know, uh, funding makes it all possible, quite honestly. And, uh, you know, we work with our clinical partners on, on many projects, but I think particular today, we'll focus on our efforts in uh, rehabilitation uh, for kids with cerebral palsy. We are so lucky to have you here to, to talk to us. Thank you for being here. Now, Josh, can you please introduce yourself and also uh, tell us a little bit how you met uh, Kevin and how did that partnership start? Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Josh. Um, I'm very lucky to um, be working with Dr. Cleary and everybody here to organize this event and, and our past events to, to do this, uh, these fundraisers. Um, you know, Children's has been um, in and around my family for a long time. Um, you know, I, growing up, had a couple, uh, not procedures, but some, some, some work done there and, and felt uh, incredibly safe during a very tough time in my life. Um, I've talked and known a number of people who have been through the children's, uh, you know, system. Um, and so, you know, for us, as we were starting to, you know, figure out how we could use these events to do some good, um, we looked around and, and we were like, who, who's in our community? Who, who exists and who's doing things? And Children's National is, is you know, is a beacon, not just, um, not just in our area, but nationally and then globally. So, um, we saw this opportunity and then we, you know, the, the ability that extra life gives us to, to make donating very easy and those kinds of things. Um, but, you know, for me, it was really trying to connect, how can we bring people together, you know, do something great and have it be meaningful and lasting. And I think that what we're doing with children's and, and hopefully what we're going to be able to build over event and event um, and over years is a really great pipeline to fund not just Dr. Cleary's work, but hopefully more games-based research in the future. Absolutely. I definitely agree that this this is an amazing partnership and I'm lucky to be a part of it as well. And I'm happy that we we chose such such a, an amazing um, company to, to work with. Uh, Josh, how, how did you meet Kevin? Um, so I have a, a, a great contact over with uh, at Children's, um, uh, Hank Rich, who has been driving kind of our relationship forward. Hank and I, you know, we got on the phone, you know, they're like, hey, how can we support you? What are we, you know, what can we do to help, you know, get this event out to a bigger audience? And over time, Hank and I were like, well, is there, you know, rather than just donate to Children's, is there anything at Children's that um, has anything to do with games? And Hank did a little research and then he was like, wow, yeah, like the work that Kevin is doing is amazing. And then Kevin um, through Hank was connected and uh, we got lunch a couple months ago. And ever since then, it's um, Dr. Cleary, um, my, Hank and myself kind of brainstorming, what can we do to raise more awareness 
um, help people understand the work that Dr. Cleary is doing um, and also bring in more dollars for, for Children's National. And, uh, and that partnership has, has been you know, pretty fruitful so far. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I actually, let's, let's hear more about that, the, those programs that are related to games. So Dr. Cleary, can you give us an overview of the types of programs that you are running right now? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, yeah. First, we, we do have a very broad portfolio in our research group. So we actually work with all the clinical departments across the hospital and the mission for our Institute where, where I run the engineering side um, really is to serve as a technology resource for the hospital. You know, earlier I had mentioned that medicine is becoming more and more high tech. I think any of us, you know, who have been around the medical setting or, you know, visited a doctor's office or, you know, had some sort of procedure know, you know, that medicine is, is very reliant on computers and technology. Um, so when they started our institute, which is almost 10 years ago, I was actually working at Georgetown in the adult uh, re radiology research world for almost 15 years before I came to Children's. And I like the Children's Hospital better. It's, it's just fun, you know, seeing the kids and hopefully helping them. But anyway, the point is that uh, they had brought an engineering-based research group into the hospital. So we're really fortunate again, as I've mentioned, to be physically located in the hospital, you know, which I think is, is really essential to advance the partnership. Um, so in terms of uh, gaming uh, specifically, we had started about five years ago uh, when the head of uh, physical medicine and rehab in, in, in hospital terms, we call that PM&R. Okay, so that'll be on the quiz later. Later, I think we're having the quiz at the end, I think for, for bonus. That's right. Yeah, and um, so PM&R came to me and said, uh, you know, We've seen some of the work you guys have done and, uh, you know, um, kids don't, are not following through on their exercises. You know, and I think any of us who have been prescribed physical therapy know that we, we generally don't do our exercises. When they ask, of course, we say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing the exercises, but we generally don't. And we're probably not doing them right. So the idea was, you know, how could we motivate kids? And, uh, you know, obviously we live in a gaming world. Certainly, you know, Josh, I'm sure can talk to that for for a long time, you know, uh, hours on end. And, you know, I'm sure he'll say something about that. Uh, but, you know, the idea was, well, if we could make it fun for kids so they would actually, you know, uh, at least, uh, you know, like to do their exercise. Um, but we could also make it more quantitative too, and that we would get data, you know, from these devices. So basically that started the project um, that I can describe in a little more detail later, you know, that was seen in some of the promotional video here, which was our ankle robot for kids with cerebral palsy. And the idea is that these kids um, who have cerebral palsy, which, which is a lifelong deficit, okay, um, so there is not really a cure right now, you know, will not have full range of motion in their ankle. And uh, therefore, you know, they won't walk very well. The, again, the technical term is ambulate. So there's quiz term number two, if you're, if you're counting it. <laughs> um, I'm going to fail this quiz. Ambly, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, right, right, right. We've got PM&R, we've got ambulate, you know, all these things. Um, so uh, they, uh, you know, you know, and, and they want to keep up with their peers. And they can be uh, young kids, you know, younger, five to 10. Um, they can be teenagers, you know, and so socially, you know, if they can't keep up with their peers, you know, it's, it's very debilitating. So anyway, the, uh, the bottom line is we had actually built this mechanical device um, that, uh, that maybe I can describe at some point here, which uh, enables kids to put their foot in and play airplane. Uh, they become a pilot for an airplane video game with their foot, fly through rings and try to get a score. And then we started clinical trials, which is a whole nother subject we can talk about. Uh, I don't want to get bogged down in paperwork, but I can tell you the approvals needed, you know, in the current climate to do medical research are, are quite stringent. Uh, but we did get approvals and we built a device and uh, we've, uh, you know, had, had reasonable success so far. So we're really looking to build upon that, you know, and I'm hoping in addition to this fundraising, um, the other connections that Josh and this group have with the gaming world can eventually make it where it's exciting, where it's multiplayer, you know, where again, you won't be the parents having to nag, you know, again, Johnny, time to do your rehab. You're like, hey, mom, can I go do my rehab now? I'm going to go play against my friends, you know, and meanwhile, we'll have a, a portal where the physical therapist and other medical professionals can monitor them. So, so that's really the vision, you know, of where we'd like to take this. And the ultimate goal would be so that these kids can walk better, uh, better quality of life, you know, and uh, I think it will help them not only with their rehab, but potentially also even academically and socially as well. So that's really the mission that we're trying to pursue here. Yeah, absolutely. What you mentioned about, you know, when, when, when people can't keep up with their peers, whether it's kids or adults, we, we fall behind and, and, uh, you know, that, that doesn't make us feel good. And that, you know, ends up 
creating mental health issues on top of the physical issues that they might be having. So that's incredible that you have this technology or developing this technology to really help kids to keep up with their peers. And the other thing that it makes me think about is uh, what we talked about with, with some of the other speakers, not during this event, but in the past, is that esports and gaming really has, it's unique in that it creates more accessibility, right? Um, the example that I like to give to people is, you know, I can't play, uh, you know, basketball with Michael Jordan, but yeah. I can definitely <laughs> play <laughs> a video game that, you know, <laughs> with Michael Jordan and beat him, right. right? So, so games really create this more equal space. And it's amazing to see that medicine is getting into that and really capitalizing on it. So, um, Dr. Cleary, can you actually describe this this robot that you're talking about and this whole program in a little more detail? Sure, sure. I, I wish I had more props with me here today, <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll try with my cell phone and uh, try not to get too technical. Uh, but the idea, again, actually, I use the wrist. The wrist is easier because I, I probably can't get my ankle up on the table now at my age. And uh, besides, I agree with you. I'm, I'm 6'2", and I could never dunk. I can't dunk now, and I could never dunk, so I couldn't play basketball with Michael Jordan, but I could play video games with me. Uh, but anyway, um, the idea is that if we look at, uh, so if you pretend my wrist is kind of my foot, you know, in, in technical terms, medical terms, we call three degrees of freedom. So one, I can flex the wrist up and down. And in the foot, we call that plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. I can move the wrist this way. You guys can all try it if you want right here too at home, you know, Excellent. and inversion, eversion. And then I can rotate the wrist. We call that abduction, adduction. It's a little harder to get the rotation with your foot. You can certainly move your foot this way, certainly move your end, certainly this way, which we call plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, where you push off when you're walking is really the key to gait. So, but the therapist said that it's not only this way being able to push off, if you don't have adequate flexibility in the other directions in your ankle as well, you won't have a natural gait. You'll, you'll look stiff, you know, you won't be able to run, you won't be able to. So what we did is we built a device where you'll actually set your foot, and I'll use my cell phone here as an example, physically set this foot in a device with three rotating degrees of freedom. So a mechanical device also attached to motors, and again, something we call encoders. Encoders are something that measure the angular position of a joint right here, so that we know as the kid's moving his foot where the foot is in space. We can then take that data, and then we can take it into a video game where you're the pilot in a plane. So you can imagine just like you might say, well, I could fly the plane with my wrist. If I went this way, I'd went up and down. This way, I'd turn left and right. This way, I'd bank left and right. And then we have a series of hoops that they need to fly through in order to get a score. So when the kids play this game, they get incredibly engaged. You know, even some kids, you know, who may, or, you know, the younger kids who may or may not, you know, may have a little behavioral issues, let's just say, of coming to the lab. When they get fixated on the video game, they are really focused. There could be other people around them and they're locked in trying to beat their score, you know, and uh, the game then also, you know, has rewards, other, you know, I guess gamification, you know, is the term too and things like that. So, so you know, for, for me, it's incredibly rewarding when you see the kids come up and we were doing this in our lab and go through the trials, you know, we start noticing that everybody in the Institute would come by and we'd be like, okay, okay, we can't quite have everybody in here, but you know, <laughs> engineers. And we have a lot of testers. Volunteers. We have a lot of testers and you know, it's just most people work on things that they don't see the end result like that. You know, they're behind the scenes, even in medical devices, or if you're doing laboratory tests or things that are longer time to clinical trials. The beauty of this is that the clinical trials are, are we, we call very low hanging fruit you know, and that we can build these devices, we can recruit kids, you know, and so, uh, so for us, it's been incredibly rewarding. And right now we've been doing mostly in the lab, we do have a version that goes into the home. But part of what we would do is like to expand the number of systems we can place in the home, uh, because it does cost money, and it does require monitoring still by a physical therapist as well. You know, we're, this is not something we're just going to toss over and say, good luck with it. You know, we really want this managed and monitored by, by medical pro professionals. Um, so for us, you know, the next step is how do we ramp up the home version? And certainly, we can talk later about telerehabilitation. And obviously, with the current pandemic, you know, telerehabilitation and telemedicine 
you know, is a hot topic. So I think that's where we want to go in the future. We've kind of shown in the lab it works, started to roll out the home version. You know, we need some funding to get more versions of that. We're also working on a lower cost version that, that Josh and I have talked about, something called even a foot mouse, for example, interface to other video games. But that's where I want to see this kind of grow. And then, you know, I think we do need to do the research and the trials. We think it's good. But in the medical field, very conservative, you know, so to get reimbursement eventually and roll this out, you know, um, and, you know, people are rightfully concerned about the cost of medicine, which I think is reasonable, we would need to show in a scientific way. So, you know, we need more people, we need people to collect data, you know, we need to publish papers, all part of trying to roll this out. So, but anyway, for me, it's been very rewarding. And my particularly favorite part is when, when the kids come try it out. <laughs> Can you tell us any stories? some of your favorite moments maybe um well i had the, the funny part was our, our first patient had the same last name as me his first name was connor and again you know just just for everybody and for the record and since we're on the air and recorded um you know we, we do have to get media release from any patient's name that we use you know medical records are confidential you know but uh, but we do have that release and, and of course most of these patients and parents are are happy to share their stories with us because they want to encourage that but anyway his name was Connor and he was just five years old and uh, he had, you know, I wouldn't say behavior issues, but, you know, at most five-year-olds, you know, he, he was a handful right here. And so his mom said that he, he liked to wear these different outfits. So one day he came in in his uh, Spidey suit, you know, so people who know the Spider-Man series and the Spidey suit, you know, it's almost like a Halloween costume, you know, and, and, and his mom said, wow, he, he was all psyched up to come in here today and play the game. And he said, I'm going to wear my Spidey suit and boost my score. You know, and that was really fantastic, you know, and just again to see, you know, a five year old who who you would have trouble holding his attention otherwise, but get on the on the video game and play the game and, and in a sense do his therapy, you know, when the therapist really would have trouble, um, you know, convincing him to do therapy sessions uh, was really great, you know, and so I, I think those are the kids that particularly, you know, and the other reason to go to the home trial and tele rehab. You know, we're, we're in the middle of D.C. And, and most of the population of the D.C. metropolitan area, I think I think Josh knows because I know you grew up here as well, you know, is distributed around the suburbs. You know, D.C. is less than a million and some of the counties like our county, Montgomery County, has, has almost or more than a million. You know, it's very hard for people to drive downtown, you know, make an appointment, get parking. So if you can bring this to the home, you know, where instead of coming twice a week, you know, for eight weeks and then saying, okay, I can't do it for a while. We've got other things, you know, they can continuously do therapy and have these devices in the home, you know, again, and with the age of the internet and, uh, you know, server-based technology, have a continuous monitoring of that where therapists can log in and, and then come in occasionally, you know, for checkups and consultations with the medical professional. I, I think that would really be a real boon to patient care. So, so again, I think that's really the, the direction we're going to emphasize going forward. Absolutely. That makes sense. And we'll talk about the, the future of these programs in just a little bit. I do want to say that Connor is correct. You know, dressing a certain way does put you in the mood for the activity mm -hmm. that you're about to do. So Spidey suit is what boosts your score. Then it's what you got to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do want to say, so Josh, Game Jam actually was recently invited to join Children's uh, National's Corporate Advisory Board. Can you please tell us about like, what that means? What, what is that partnership? What kind of things will you be advising children's on? So there's kind of two things that I'm, I'm really interested in. One, it, it's, it's a huge honor. Um, I feel incredibly, um, you know, to have Game Gym be uh, along with the companies who are on that board is, um, it, you know, it's, it's an amazing honor. But I think now is when my work starts. And, and what I really want to do is go out into the games uh, industry and the esports industry and be an evangelical for this type of research and for this type of work. So um, I, I, um, I think we, we were invited based on the efforts of the past. But what I'm really interested in is, you know, where we could take this in the future. Um, you know, who can we reach out to? Um, you know, Epic Games is a couple hours away. Uh, Bethesda Softworks is in our neighborhood. Um, you know, Amazon uh, is going to have a, a spot here in Northern Virginia. Um, what I'm going to be working on is working to get um, people involved in the games industry, those big organizations, to help fund some of this research um, and also bring awareness to it. So, um, you know, first awareness at very at very least, um, then the dollars um, that that we need. Um, you know, 
Dr. Cleary and, and what he is doing um, is amazing, but it costs money and, and we have to, you know, we have to, you know, help him so that he can do his work. We need to help him, um, you know, make sure that, that the, the work is financially secure. So um, I'm going to be, you know, pushing that forward, trying to do everything I can to get more people in, into this world. And hopefully, you know, uh, at, you know, the next summer bash or summer bash down the road, we're going to be talking with Dr. Cleary about, you know, three, four, five, six, seven different research studies that we're all doing involving games because we've got this wonderful flow of money from, from the games industry. So, um, that's my role. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I, I'm, I think that it's easy to get people to, um, you know, get like buy into an amazing cause. And so we just need to make sure that people are aware of the work that Dr. Cleary is doing, how they can help, and then helping to show, you know, the work that he's doing as well. Um, we're airing videos throughout the weekend, or you can go on Game Jam's YouTube page and check out our, our uh, donations trailer, which has a little bit of video um, that shows what the, the ped bot actually looks like, um, you know, how it works and how it integrates with games. And I think that the more brilliant people in the games industry that we get into, you know, our little network, the more, um, the more smart, amazing ideas are going to pop up on how we can incorporate games and medicine to help kids. And, and I'm very exciting, excited to be, to be pushing that forward um, as part of the corporate advisory board. That's great. And Josh, I absolutely agree. I think awareness is really the first step because Dr. Clary talked about how you have to go through these approval processes and you have to request funding and it's all very strict and difficult. And part of it is that people out there don't really understand uh, you know, the research that's being done or the potential solutions that, that this is creating. So absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, the awareness factor is absolutely very important. Now, are there any kind of specific projects that you're looking forward to? Was that to me? Sure. You, Dr. Cleary, <laughs> you might have different projects in mind. Uh uh, I, I, my answer will probably be short uh, or shorter than Dr. Cleary's. He has got a little bit more visibility on the future. Um, to me, I, I think that the gamification of rehab is a gigantic opportunity for kids um, and adults and everybody around the world. I think that rehab generally is not handled well once you leave the rehab center. And once you go home and you're supposed to be, you know, doing your rehab, generally it kind of falls off. Um, I've had two ACL replacements. I can tell you from experience that that is exactly what happens. And I can tell you that the knee that I rehabbed better is better and stronger to this day than the knee that I didn't rehab as well. Um, and I think that, you know, if we can figure out one, how to get this out and, and, and help, you know, whether it's your shoulder, your wrist, your elbow, um, your knee, your leg, whatever it is, um, and expand it out, we'll be able to help everyone. Um, and, and to me, the implications of that are absolutely massive. So um, that's just one small piece of this. But I think that there's a, a, a variety of different ways that we could take games-based research. And I'm sure Dr. Cleary can, uh, you know, brainstorm a couple other ways. Yes, Dr. Cleary, do you have any projects in mind on the horizon where you can use gaming to really help folks in the medical field? Yeah, I, I think as, as Josh said, the, the sky is really the limit here. And uh, I didn't know you tore both ACL, so I guess that's why you can't duck any more either. Then. <laughs> exactly, Unfortunately, the, the, yeah. the, 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 the last one actually was going for a dunk attempt. It oh, was really okay. embarrassing. It was yeah. the worst thing okay. ever. My friend okay. said not to do it. I yeah. went for it, completely yeah. missed. And then when yeah. I came down, I tore the ACL. Yeah. So yeah. it was, uh, that was pretty brutal. But yeah, right. you and I, we're, we're ground folks. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. well, that must be a lesson to the folks out there. But uh, anyway, <laughs> um, you know, I think as you said, you know, if you go to some of the rehabilitation meetings, um, you know, I think these concepts are gaining steam, but most of rehabilitation is really done in the traditional manner. And, uh, you know, we know that patient compliance is poor. So 
I think the best part about the uh, the gamification of rehab is, uh, is, is certainly, you know, in pediatrics, what we do, you know, it's a natural, but I think even it's been shown even in older adults and even seniors, you know, that if you make them go in for therapy, they'd much rather try to play a game, connect the dots, solve a crossword puzzle, you know, than just say, uh, trace the letters of the, you know, alphabet with your hand, for example, you know, which is actually a therapy test. So, so for us, there's a, there's all kinds of patient population. We, we are focusing now on the kids with cerebral palsy because that was somewhat low-hanging fruit, but we had actually built another system, um, which could have been cerebral palsy, or also kids who have autism, you know, who don't have a, a great attention. Uh, therapeutic horseback riding, you know, is a therapy, you know, for both kids with autism and, and other kids, um, you know, with motion issues too. And uh, we had built a, uh, we unfortunately had taken it down because we, we kind of ran out of funds, but we had literally built a motion platform like a flight simulator uh, that had a carousel horse on it. Uh, we joked for those who have ever been to DC and know on the National Mall, they still have the carousel horse going around. We joked that we went down there one night and took one of the horses, but that was not the case. I just want to say for the record that we actually purchased that horse right here too. And uh, we had actually programmed in horse patterns. So, you know, this got so sophisticated that we literally talked to a professor in Europe of a professor of equine therapy. You know, equine is horse right there. So he, you know, had all sorts of there's gait, trollop, canter type of thing. So, so that was really cool. So I think, you know, combining the technology where you have a mechanical platform, you know, that you can really kind of uh, reinforce movement patterns and do that in a quantitative way. And then having sensors and other things where kids can both interact and you can measure you know, how they're doing the biomechanics, things like that, I think is, is really the future. And I know not to put in too many plugs for children's, but I think that's why we're here, um, that children's is actually opening a new orthopedic clinic uh, in Silver Spring, just outside Washington, D.C., um, aimed at more of the sports rehab world, too, as well. Uh, but, you know, I think for sports performance, uh, you know, both for people who want to rehab and, you know, and people who want to work on their athletic skills, you know, I can envision systems like this, you know, as the technology, as sensors improve, computer vision, um, I think this is really going to be, be a hot area for the future. Um, so, uh, you know, it's very exciting. And, and as I mentioned, we can certainly talk about regulatory before, which does exist, but, it, but it's nothing like trying to get a new device cleared for surgery, which we do in some of our other projects. That's a whole nother hurdle. So, so I do think rehab projects, you know, you, you can go through the paperwork and things necessary to, to very quickly start clinical trials in, in this space. That's definitely great to hear that, that it's expanding, that you're opening a new new office to, to provide more of these services. And I was also really happy to hear that, you know, even though obviously Children's National helps children, but you mentioned that this can be expanded to helping um, adults with, with physical therapy and rehabilitation. And I think that's really important to mention because I think in, in many people's minds, games are for kids, and, and that's really should not be the case. People like to play. Playing is fun. Mm -hmm. And we have so many professionals from the esports industry joining us um, th that are guest speakers. They're all adults, and they're all gamers. And, you know, just to show you that people people like to be like lifelong, you know, I, I don't want to say gamers. Maybe some of them don't identify as gamers, but people like to play games lifelong and that really shouldn't be limited to children so that was that was really exciting to hear you mention josh i do want to ask you a question so um what do you think that the esports community can do to support this type of work um i know we we, we talked a little bit about this with the previous guest speakers we said you know sometimes it's scary to reach out to ask for help but a lot of times you'll find that people want to help so for all the community leaders that are watching this right now uh you know, that maybe have their own esports organizations, what can they do to help you help Children's National? Um, well, at the very, at the, at the, the, the big reason, you know, one of the things that we need is dollars. That's why we're here. Um, you know, if you can donate, um, you can scroll down on that Twitch page, hit donate. You could donate through the event homepage on gamegym.com, or you could go buy a Summer Bash Smash t-shirt and donate that way. Um, but dollars is, is huge. Um, any kind of awareness that you can bring to the efforts that we're doing is huge. Um, if you have ideas, you can reach out to Dr. Cleary and you, you know, I'm sure he needs help and, you know, all kinds of other things. So, you know, to me, it's about presenting yourself and saying, how can I help? You know, what can I do? How can I engage my community? Because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the, you know, leading the game gym community, um, you know, you over here in your community, 
um, whatever that community may be, maybe it's your soccer team, maybe it's your music group, maybe it's your, your gaming, your gaming crew at college, um, you know, get your community behind these kinds of things too. Um, the, the last thing I think that I think is, is really important is like realizing that we're talking about kids and people and that like, sometimes it's, it's, you forget because we're talking about, you know, robotics and games and things like that. It's really about the people at the end of the day. And that's kind of like, you know, everything that you can do, any, any little bit that you can do helps those kids, helps those people that Dr. Cleary is working with. So um, dollars, awareness, and just general care, care for those people because they're struggling, they're dealing with something very hard. And the least we could do is help them um, make their rehab a little bit easier. That's great advice. So I hope everybody noted that down. <laughs> the, but we should have experience. donations just running in now, you know, <laughs> now that it's super clear to everybody. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's good to point that out. And like you said, at the end of the day, we're, we're helping people and you know, that, that's what counts. So absolutely. Now, Dr. Clear, I know you touched, touched a little bit about uh, uh, on this, but what other research in the medical field, like maybe what other types of uh, maybe it's not even rehabilitation, but like what other medical procedures can benefit from gaming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think you're right. You know, it, it could be implied uh, very broadly. Um, I'll take a minute too to just talk about our new research campus too as well, because um, the hospital, again, I, I, I'm sure we have a nationwide audience, but maybe many from DC, uh, you know, particularly those who, who grew up in Washington, DC, may know that what we, we had used to call the old Walter Reed Army Medical Campus, which had closed about 10 years ago, um, about uh, five years ago, Children's got a portion of that land. And uh, just this year, we opened a new research campus there. So, uh, so unfortunately, at our current location, we were really what we call landlocked. We really didn't have space to expand our activities. And so the hospital has opened a new research campus, uh, includes a rare uh, disease institute, a genetics institute too, specifically tailored to kids. Um, so we're hoping to make it more convenient, you know, for people to visit us. So I think the good news is that, uh, you know, even even with the uh, the pandemic crisis, which, you know, obviously it affected healthcare, and, uh, you know, healthcare finances are not great in a lot of places, because, um, you know, pandemic cost extra money, many things that, you know, elective surgeries were postponed, you know, that bring in surgery, not so much in kids, because most of it is not elective, you know, in kids, but, uh, but anyway, uh, the hospital, despite the financial crunch, because the hospital for the 10 years I'd been there had been really taking off, you know, going like gangbusters. So just a, a little, a little slow, but we were still able to open the research campus this year in the middle of the pandemic, which I thought was amazing. So I think the opportunities for growth are, 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 are tremendous. And then, you know, again, I, I think the ideas of for, for gaming, you know, right now we're looking at physical therapy, but but there are all kinds of medical specialties. You know, we, we have a genetic specialty, um, you know, that does a lot of telemedicine and they have to do physical exam and measure height, weight and growth, you know, right here, you know, and again, getting the kid to sit still to get those parameters. So if you had the three dimensional body camera, you know, where you had the child, you've got to do this pose or follow the avatar, things like that, you know, and we, we, we could record data, you know, either in the clinic or eventually, as we've been talking about the, the home, you know, virtual clinic. You know, how, how, how can you do things, you know, so I think the whole idea of even telemedicine, you know, just in general, which, you know, I think a lot of patients prefer, you know, particularly with kids, as we say, the logistics of getting your kid to the hospital, you know, and you having to take time off of work to do that are very hard. So I, I think if, if, if gaming is a way that you could also bring therapy, rehab, um, you know, even clinical evaluation eventually to the home space right here, you know, that, that, that would be huge. You know, I think, I think medicine will be changing. Um, you know, the, the good thing about, uh, about being in medicine is that medicine is constantly evolving, you know, and medicine is, is as I've mentioned, you know, becoming more and more reliant on technology. Um, so I think the, uh, the applicability of, of gaming, you know, in, in medicine in, in many areas, you know, I think we, we could have a separate brainstorming session you know, which might be very interesting, Josh, where we can get some clinicians from around the hospital, you know, to think about, uh, you know, here's what we've done, you know, how could you use gaming in your area? And, uh, you know, if we can make it low cost, if we can make it eventually some of the things we do open source, 
particularly in terms of the software side. Uh, and then since we're a research group, you know, I'm not sure, you know, whether we try to commercialize our mechanical devices or we say, let's, let's make that, we'll call it open hardware instead, you know, we'll, we'll publish those designs. And then, you know, with the advent of 3D printing and things like that, you know, people can eventually, uh, you know, so I think if we can lower the barriers to entry, you know, where we can make this technology uh, more affordable and accessible across a, wi a wider spectrum, you know, and then all the while collecting data, you know, to show insurance reimbursement, you know, the powers that be that this is, uh, you know, does lead to better patient care and is, uh, you know, financially even advantageous, um, then I think uh, that the, the, uh, the, the, the again, the, the sky's the limit, you know, I think I said before, the future is bright. So I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to what the, uh, the next couple of years in this space will bring. In terms of the brainstorming session, I already have one idea. Well, it's not mine, but I, something that I heard about that I, I'm really excited about is virtual reality, especially in the space of surgery, yeah. uh, because then doctors get a chance to practice and, and it's very realistic, especially when, you know, you come out with better haptic technology so that, you know, it actually feels very realistic, not, not just looks very realistic. Right. It's going to just open so many more doors because it's going to, to to allow doctors to to practice better. Also, going to maybe eliminate um, things like animal testing because you can just do it in a virtual space. So, um, if you're going to have that brainstorming session, please invite me. I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. I, I said, uh, you know, I said I, I, we haven't met, so I'm not sure if you're an engineer or not. But it sounds like you could be if you're talking about virtual reality and haptics. Then, so. So I'm actually an attorney, but I okay. I, I am I am interested in, in in technology and nerdy things, and you okay. know I'm a gamer, so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I play VR games. So I guess that's that's how I, I know about them. Okay. Um, but so, Dr. Cleary, what advice would you have for young professionals? Maybe who, uh, you know folks maybe just entering the, the the medical school or anything like that, who might be interested in this, right? In this intersection of medicine and games. What advice do you have for them in terms of pursuing that? Because I, I'm sure that there aren't, you know, like gaming and medicine classes or something like that. <laughs> right. how, how can they follow that dream? Right. There should be. There yeah, should be. Yeah, there <laughs> be. Maybe we should start a series right yes, here. Yes, I you know, love that. Right here too. Um, yeah, well, I, I think if we even might even say it a little more broadly to start and then zoom in, you know, I think if you look at, you know, even technology and medicine as well too, I mean, I think the idea you know, that, that medicine, you know, for many years, you know, and still is, but, you know, was very much a caste system kind of, you know, as you train a certain way and you apprentice and, you know, you can understand if you're responsible for patient care, you know, that that does need to be very stringent and rigorously enforced. But, you know, as you mentioned, the idea of virtual reality and simulation, which has opened things up, you know, we say the new residents come in the hospital in July 1st and jokingly we say, well, don't come in in July, give them a month or so to get up to speed before you go in, you know, but you know, you do have to, you know, uh, you do have to, you know, eventually train on patients, you know, there's no secret about that in medicine, but if you could do simulation, you know, if you could do virtual reality, if you could evaluate performance beforehand, you know, I, I think that would be great. So that's, that's just one thing I wanted to bring up about your, your earlier point. And then I think the idea of technology and medicine I mean, you know, we think our group is unique. We think we are probably, uh, at least in the U.S., the, the largest research group, uh, you know, on technology physically in a children's hospital. Certainly, you know, some of the other bigger children's hospitals, which we won't mention by name because we're not going to give them airtime, but, you know, have research groups, you know, as part of that, but, but in a separate building. So, again, the confluence of that. So, you know, to me, if you can find an environment, you know, where you can get and you can observe, you know, these things and kind of see because, you know, if you're in medicine, you learn your domain. If you're in engineering, you learn your domain or whatever specialty is. Specialties learn those domains and don't cross fertilize very well. So I think the ability to try to cross fertilize and volunteer opportunity um, and specifically in gaming medicine, I don't have a great suggestion yet. I think Josh is right. We need to make that course. But, you know, obviously, if you look on the web nowadays, you, you will find conferences and meetings you know, that, that start to talk about it, sometimes buried within other societies, you know, a computer science society, or other, but you will find, you know, papers on gamification in medicine, uh, you know, gamification in psychology, things like that, too, as well, and, and, you know, therapy. So I think looking at that, and then kind of saying, okay, with that, you know, what other type of training, observation, you know, how can I kind of find my niche, 
if that's a space I'm interested in pursuing. Um, but I always say to all the, the young people, and I can say young people now because I'm getting older right here too, um, you know, is that, uh, you know, get the best training you can early on because, you know, that, that will set you in good shape for the rest of your life right here. And uh, yeah, you know, we've got the computers and the internet and you can find anything, but we have so much information. How do you sort through all that information and decide what's relevant or not? So I think that's where education and training and, and context comes into place, you know, so, you know, we can make amazing things. We've got 3D printers in our lab. I can do things, you know, there that, that, you know, I, I couldn't even have done when I got my engineering degree or would have taken months or I've had outsourced for a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I was on wireframe silicon graphics machines in college doing, doing wireframe animation, you know, I mean, so thir well, 30 years ago, just for the record. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the point is that, um, you know, I, I, I think you, you, you can find things, but then you have to have the passion to explore your niche. But again, get, get all the training you can early on, because I think it will put you in, in good shape for the rest of your career. That's great advice. And, and what about what, what advice or maybe thoughts do you have on folks who maybe are not young professionals, maybe folks who are switching careers? Because one of the things that we've heard over and over in, in several panels is it's not too late to follow your dreams. So if there's a gamer that always wanted to be a doctor or a doctor that always wanted to be a gamer, and now there's this possibility to work in both fields at once, do you have any thoughts or advice on that? Well, I, I think you said it a little bit, you know, uh, you know, follow your dreams. And, uh, you know, what did they have the baseball game now with the cornfield, right? I forget the name of that that they showed recently. You know, if you build it, they will come, you know, the movie right here. Field anyway, of dreams. Field of dreams. Field of dreams. Thank you, Josh. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I would agree, you know, that, you know, we all know, you know, that we're, we're also going to live longer, you know, and that, uh, you know, uh, most of us, at least, you know, for me, I don't, you know, look to retire, you know, I'm going to be a lifelong learner, I'm going to reinvent myself, you know, even at uh, I'm 61. Now I said, well, I can do this for another 10 years, or maybe, you know, I can do something else after that, you know, I love it. So I, I think, you know, you need to think you can reinvent yourself, but you probably do need to be realistic. I mean, I think it's great to decide at age 40 or 50, you want to become a doctor. But to be honest, probably a medical school is not going to take you right now, you know, given the training pathway, you know, to me, I mean, there, there are, you know, I don't, I don't want to just completely shut that down because there are people who have done it, sir. But, you know, I, I, yeah, I think there are other ways to get involved too. You know, you can contribute, you can volunteer. Um, but, you know, I do think it's possible to switch careers. And again, you know, with online classing and online learning, you don't have to go to classes physically, you know, so you, so you, you can, you can learn new skills, but, but I would completely agree that, uh, that it's certainly possible to reinvent yourselves. And, you know, uh, when I grew up again, if you worked in engineering for IBM, you were at IBM all your career, that doesn't happen anymore. And not even in my lifetime now, you know, because IBM has changed and things like that. So I think uh, for professionals, you know, or, or anybody, you can't be thinking that you're going to have one career path. You, you do have to be thinking that you're going to, you know, have to, to reinvent yourself, but you're probably going to have to be, you know, as we call a lifelong learner as well too, because, you know, you, you will need skills to do the things you want to do. And, and so you'll have to, you know, have the, uh, the fortitude to, to pursue those. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we have just a couple of minutes left. So I want to give both of you an opportunity to just give your final thoughts. So Josh, is there anything specific that you're looking forward to in this partnership or any specific advice that you have for folks who might want to join this journey? Um, yeah, two, two main points. Uh, the first one is that, uh, you know, thank you, Dr. Cleary for, for coming on and and giving us a face and a person you know the, the the dollars that we're raising are not going to you know some blind you know fund somewhere they're going to you to help you do your research to help real kids out there in our community and i think that um that's something that through these panels through the videos that we're that we're able to produce now and in the future um you know i think um it it, it that's one of the biggest changes we've seen over the past year in terms of working with children's nationals. We have now um, real people who are affected by the work that we do and um, and and that impact. Um, the last the other thing is that this all works because you took medicine, robotics, and gaming and put them all together to create something special. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, what I just want to do is, you know, for everybody at home, you know, you have skills, you have a lot of skills and, and there's creative ways that you could put your skills together 
that can make a huge impact on the world. So maybe it's photography and writing and medicine. Maybe it's, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, community organizing and, um, you know, different things. Take the things that you're passionate about, find a way to put them together, because if you can, generally what you could produce is something incredibly powerful. So, um, you know, don't forget that we're helping real people. And then also, um, you know, you at home, you have a ton of talents. See what you could put together. You know, try to be as creative as Dr. Cleary is and put some things together to make the world a little bit of a better place. Absolutely agree. I think whatever you're interested in, you can make that intersection happen. It, it's probably already happening. And if not, you can be the first person and you won't be the only one. So absolutely exactly. put, put it together and make something creative and amazing happen. Absolutely agree, Josh. Dr. Cleary, do you have any final thoughts on either you know the future uh, of the intersection of medicine and gaming or any advice that folks listening right now can help um, you know, advance that future? Yeah, I think I, I would just like to summarize as well with just, just a few points. Um, you know, one is I am incredibly optimistic, as you probably can already tell, you know, that uh, I, I do think uh, the time is right. You know, the technology is ripe. I mean, I think we have plenty of technology out there right now, you know, and we just need to find creative ways to use it. And, uh, you know, just to reemphasize what Josh said, we, you know, I think we all know that in real estate, they say location, location, location. I say in the uh, research world, we still say dollars, dollars, dollars. You know, I, I still spend more than half my time even writing proposals. And, you know, so any funding that I get where I can use that directly for the kids, you know, and quite honestly, you know, don't have to, to write a proposal with a very long review cycle, you know, um, to, to get uh, funding is greatly appreciated. Um, we do also, I think, as Josh mentioned, we have a very multidisciplinary team. You know, we have physical therapists, we have an engineer, we have a computer scientist, we have a graphics designer, you know, so, uh, so I'm, you know, I'm happy if other people who have skills want to reach out for me. Um, I don't know how we'll, my email is just kcleary at childrensnational.org. So kcleary. And so we always joke, uh, K-C-L-E-A-R-Y uh, at childrensnational.org. You're, you're welcome to reach out to me. And I, I do try to respond, um, you know, and then finally, I, I think, you know, as we said, uh, you know, you, you should pursue your passion. I, I firmly believe in that, that uh, life is too short. You know, if, if you can, you know, at all manage it, of course, you know, depending upon your situation, uh, pursue your passion. And then, uh, you know, it's it's not really a job. Uh, it's a mission, you know, and, and it's fun for us to be able to go down to the hospital um, and see the kids and, and hopefully, uh, you know, help them as, as well as I think advance the, uh, the next generation of medicine. Um, so I think this is a mission we can all feel feel good about. And I want to thank you guys and, and thank everybody uh, for their time today. And I was I was very happy to do it. Well, thank you so much, Josh. Thank you for, for joining to, to tell you. us sort of the other side and in, in how you're going to be part of the advisory board. That's definitely very exciting. And huge, huge thanks to Dr. Cleary for being here, for explaining these programs, like Josh said, putting a face to what we're doing. Um, so to anybody who's watching, please donate right now. It will go directly to Dr. Cleary's research and help kids with rehabilitation through gaming, which is just an amazing goal. So thank you both so much for being here. And with that, we are going to take a short break. When we come back, we are going to see some Smash competition. That's it for me as your host for today. You're going to hear from some amazing commentators later today, but I will see you tomorrow morning for some amazing speakers. So